Today, on Cruise Man's Garage, we're going to show you how to install the Homelink garage door opener onto a 2018 plus Honda Goldwing. Now the installation process in this video is the same for any 2018 to 2020 Goldwing and only slightly different for the 2021 and later Goldwing models, but I'll talk about that later. This video is sponsored by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. This video demonstrates a shortcut to removing the center panel switch. This is not recommended in the Honda Service Manual. If you want to see the full removal process, check the link in the description of this video to the full version. A link to the PDF file with the Honda installation instructions is included in the description of this video. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove and replace all of these parts, check out my maintenance video series. Open both saddlebag doors and remove both of the side cover panels. Disconnect the heated seat connector on the right side of the motorcycle in front of the saddlebag. Remove the 6mm Allen bolts and washers on each side of the seat at the very front. Masking tape can be used to prevent paint damage during seat removal. You begin by releasing the two nylon pins at the front of the seat. Pull up firmly on both sides at the same time. Then, begin working the seat forward and up, making sure that the connector is free. We need to remove these two bolts and this hand grip, and then we're going to remove this one as well. We have to be cautious that there's a cable attached to this uh, for, the, for the little helmet um, rack or helmet holder, whatever they call it. Okay, so we're going to remove these two 12 millimeter bolts. And one thing you have to be careful of is make sure you hold this with your hand because if you remove both these bolts, this is going to fall and it's going to scratch your paint. So you want to make sure you always hold on to this as you remove these bolts. And also there's a washer that goes with the bolt. So make sure you get the washer and the bolt. The passenger footrest cover is held in place with two body clips at the rear one 10 millimeter bolt and a three millimeter hex screw. Okay, there's actually a little hose, and it's inside of a little... Uh, I'll show you once I get this off. Get that out of the way a little bit. Let's see if we can't work this thing up here. You see, sometimes you just have to kind of move stuff around. There we go. Okay, this hose was locked into this little uh, cable stay right here, so you have to kind of pop it out. Next, we're going to focus our attention on the center panel switch. Now, this must be moved in such a way so we can get access to install the home link buttons down at the bottom, and those home link buttons came in your kit. The center panel switch is held in place with two 5mm socket bolts on each side. There are also two push pin rivets kind of in this area that we'll need to remove. While Honda recommends completely removing the center panel switch 
which requires removing the top shelter and many, many other pieces, we're going to show you a shortcut today. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to lift up these two pieces of plastic so that we can get access to those five millimeter socket bolts. It will also give us access to those push pin rivets. Before we move the center panel switch out of the way, I like to clean this entire area with some water and a microfiber cloth, just so that if there's any dust on the surface, we don't get parts scratched. I want to start by removing the two body clips. There's one in each corner, uh, kind of on the inside underneath this shelter. They're hard to photograph and they're kind of hard to see, but you'll find these two body clips. They're like little plastic rivets. You poke them in the center with a pick and then you can use your fingernail to pull them out. If you're not familiar with these body clips and how they work, check out my Goldwing maintenance videos for a complete description of fasteners and body clips. Here you can see what we're going to be attempting to do in the next step. We have to raise up this shelter flap, that's just my name for it, so that we can get access to that 5 millimeter socket bolt. Now, we have to release this nylon snap clip which fits down into another plastic piece. And it can fit in there very tight, so it takes some patience to release that clip. I'm going to start with the left side flap. This is actually a part of the top shelter. We're just going to release that snap clip, but you want to be very careful when you do this. You're going to pull up straight up, and at the same time, you'll want to use your other hand to kind of kind of firmly hold that center panel switch in place. And this, like I said, this flap, that nylon clip is in there pretty tight. So I'm just showing you here how it moves and it's kind of flexible, but you don't want to pull it up too far or you could damage the paint. So you always want to make sure you're holding your hand in a position so that when you do pop it out, you're going to hear a little pop. Uh, might scare you a little bit when that nylon body clip releases it's going to pop because you got two plastic parts kind of held together there but you'll see how flexible this is you can see that you can actually move it a little bit without damaging anything you just don't want to bend it too far and if you look underneath now you can see that five millimeter socket bolt that we need to get access to here you can see the head of the 5 millimeter allen socket bolt and then here is the nylon clip we just released now I'm going to move the camera around where you can kind of see the front edge of this base. This is actually, this black plastic is actually the base of the center panel switch. And you'll notice this little push pin rivet on the front. And we have to remove that push pin rivet first. And so you can usually get your fingernail underneath that little edge of that rivet and just pop it out and it'll come right out. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift up the right side uh, wing or flap uh, like we on the left side before I pull out those rivets. Now by just pulling up on that flap a little bit you can get access to that rivet and I'm just using my fingernail to kind of pull that rivet out. You'll see it here in just a second. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the left side. Now I recommend that you use masking tape to protect the painted surfaces both on the center panel switch and on the top shelter, those little wings or flaps or whatever we want to call them. So here I'm going to use a lot of blue masking tape all over because as we remove this center panel switch, there's always the chance that these plastic parts will rub or hit each other and it could cause some damage to the paint or to those surfaces. So I'm going to lay down a lot of this blue masking tape all around uh, just to make sure we don't have any problems. If this is your first time to remove the center panel switch in this manner, it might even be a good idea to put some masking tape across the clear part of the dash as well, just to protect it. Now we're going to open this center pocket door before we remove the center panel switch just to get it out of the way. But I want to lay down some more masking tape on these little edges, these wings, uh, as you can see here. 
The reason is because I don't want my little Allen wrench to scratch that edge of the paint. You can see here I'm using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench to get in there and I can actually turn that little socket bolt. Now you have to hold up that little plastic wing to get access to this. And you can turn the Allen wrench the other way too, but there's always a chance that the long end will hit or scrape on the center panel switch. So I'm actually doing it this way. And as with anything you do on the Goldwing, take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Here you can see I have that socket bolt removed. And that's really the only thing we have to do. Uh, the next step will be to remove the center panel switch. Now we want to remove the bolt on the right side as well. With both rivets and both bolts removed, you can now slide the center panel switch forward toward the dash. See how I'm sliding it forward? The front edge is almost touching the dash. And then you can grab it on both sides and lift up firmly to release that nylon body clip underneath. Okay, now be careful. Watch the front of that center panel switch. You don't want it to hit your clear dash up front. You might even want to put some masking tape on the dash to protect it. So now we lift this up and be careful because there's wires connected and we're not removing or releasing those wires. So now you can close that center pocket door and grab a hand towel uh, to put over the painted surface before you move this center panel switch back and kind of flip it backward. Now don't Again, don't put those wires in a bind. So carefully move it back like this, and you can see now you can gain access to the backside of this center panel switch. Now, of course, with it in this position, you can get access to the four screws, as I'm showing you here, that hold those little gray side panels in piece. There's the, the four different screws. And then once you remove those side panels, you can get access to the screws that hold the black garnish in place to, to install your switches. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you how to disassemble the center panel switch with it off the motorcycle, but the process is the same even if you still have it on the bike flipped over like we did in the previous section. We're going to remove these four JIS or Phillips screws, and we're going to remove these two silver side panels first. With all four screws removed, you can then begin pulling the uh, side pieces away from the body. There are a few clips that hold it in place. You just pull on it and they will come loose. There are two self-tapping screws at the back of the center panel switch that hold this black polished garnish in place. There's also a small clip at the very front. So we're going to remove these two screws first and you want to make sure you keep all these screws separate so that you get the right size screws back in the correct position. With the screws removed, you can now lift up on the back end of this black garnish and just kind of lift it up and forward. It, uh, there is a small clip at the very front, but it will uh, release and then you can just pop it right off. Here's our little dummy plugs that we, we're going to replace with our home link switches. So let's go get the switches and we'll put these in. Remove these two switch blades. Use a small JIF screwdriver to remove these two screws that hold the dummy plugs in place. With the screws removed, you can just simply lift the plugs out of, out of the space. This one should just lift right out, just like that. And then we're going to replace them with the little home link switches. Make sure you get them down in the guides. There we go. You can see it goes down like a switch. Where's the other one? Here we go. There's the left side.
In this next step, we need to move the right saddlebag away from the frame just about an inch so we can get our cables where we need them to be under the seat. We will be removing the rear fender and we'll be removing the trunk center lower cover. Also, we'll be removing the trunk side covers and the passenger backrest. Now you see why dealers charge so much to install Homelink. But you will save three to four hundred dollars in installation by doing it yourself. This video demonstrates the removal of the trunk side panels on a 2018 Honda Goldwing. The trunk design did change in 2021 to a larger trunk, and the procedure for removing the trunk side panels is slightly different. I do cover this in my Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. Remove the two Phillips screws that hold the trunk lower front panel in place. This step is only necessary on the tour models. With the screws removed, you can remove the trunk front lower panel as shown. In an effort to make it easier to get this trunk side panel off, I'm going to remove this uh, passenger backrest because these little pieces right here are kind of per in the way of getting this uh, side panel off. I'm not sure if you can kind of see how that does that. But anyway, there's three screws on each side. There's one right here on the side. I don't know if you can see that. And then there's two right up here. I'm going to remove those. Be cautious that this one right here is smaller than the other two. So I'm going to remove all three of these. Hopefully that will get the uh, rider backrest off. And then there are two additional screws that must be removed. Okay, after removing those bolts, the backrest does come off. There is a heated connector for the, the heated backrest. And there's a little tab there that you have to press. Remove the three self-tapping screws from the top edge of the trunk inner panel. Remove the two additional screws shown here at the top of the panel. Remove the three body clips from the trunk floor shown here. Take note that the one in the front is longer. Now to remove the trunk panel, I like to start at the rear underneath and pull the clips and tabs loose. And then you can begin working the front, the kind of the speaker cover and the other section loose from the front and just pull it forward and it will come off. Here we're looking at the lower center panel of the trunk. You can see the tabs that kind of line up with those uh, trunk side panels underneath. Remove the body clips at the upper corners of the saddlebag center cowl just above the rear fender. Remove the four Phillips screws that hold the trunk lower center cover in place. When it comes loose, you'll notice there is an electrical connector for the trunk uh, release and you will need to disconnect that. Okay, now we're going to remove this rear fender piece, after which we're going to remove this piece. There's two screws up in here. You can't see them. I'll show them to you on my other camera. Remove these two 5mm Allen screws and then work the rear fender loose from the frame. Remember to disconnect the connector for the license plate light. Remove the two 5mm Allen screws that hold the saddlebag rear center cowl in place. Get it out. Get the screw out of the way. I'm going to have to take this little thing off of this little stay like that. There's no need to remove the cable. You can just let this piece hang in place. Next, we need to work in the right side saddlebag. We have some screws we'll need to remove. This screw here, which holds the saddlebag catch in place. There's another screw, and then there are two at the back. This one here and one in the front. There's also a five millimeter Allen screw or bolt up at the top toward the back at the rear, and then two in the floor of the saddlebag. All of those have to come out. 
This bolt will come out later. Here I'm removing the four Phillips screws that hold the saddlebag catch mechanism in place. And once you get all four of these removed, you can just slightly wiggle this catch mechanism out low enough so that you can get the antenna out. This piece takes a little bit of finesse. You just kind of have to work it out a little at a time. There are some cables that hold it in place. There's some little catches and you can see now you can see the top of the radio antenna coming down. Okay, so now I've got this uh, this unit down. It's actually the saddlebag catch and here's the radio antenna which we have to remove. Now this is kind of being held up here right now by a cable. You can't see it, but there's actually a cable that will allow you to open this saddlebag in case you lose power. And we have to disconnect that cable before we can get all this uh, to come down to where we can work a little more cleanly. So what I'm going to do is remove this screw right here and I think that will let me take out this radio antenna and then I can get better access to that cable. Now this radio antenna is out of the way. Now I can see these cables that are kind of holding everything in place here. There's one here that goes to the other saddlebag. There's one here that goes to the trunk. It's like an emergency trunk release. And I'm going to undo uh, this trunk release first and see if that doesn't help. Okay, you can see that once I've disconnected this uh, cable that goes to the trunk, the emergency trunk release, this thing falls down and I've got a little more room to work in here now. Our home link box is going to mount right here. I'm not sure if this harness is going to go below it or above it. Now there's two screws that mount from this direction. If you can see, they go from the front to the back. And I know it's dark in there because it's all black. But that little box, if you look at the instructions, you'll see the orientation. This little Honda logo faces backward. I'm putting the cable underneath it, and I think once I get this kind of this outside screw in, then I'm going to push this down as hard as I can. Okay, now I went ahead and took this back out. And as you can see, I had to work this harness, this wiring harness, around this outside mounting post like that. So now our home link will mount correctly. This is the plug that you have to remove. After you remove this rubber plug, you can then pull the home link wiring harness through the opening. Now you need to remove this 8mm bolt and washer. And when you do, you'll be able to pull the saddlebag away from the frame and it will give you enough room to work that home link harness down and through the opening where you removed the plug. Alright, now we've got the plug pulled through. You have to soap it up with some dishwashing soap. Pull it through from the back side. Here's the part that connects to the bike. You have to start back here and pull from underneath and you'll kind of work your hand from up here like this, pushing that plug as you pull over here till it comes through and seals. You want to make sure it's sealed. You don't want anything leaking in your saddlebag. Now we can plug this into the home link. Okay, here's our connector coming up from the home link. And here is the connector on the bike. You can see there's a dummy plug. It's an 8-pin connector. Now, mine was kind of buried down here. It's kind of buried down here. It's got a boot on it. As you can see, this little boot. So when I found it, it was really kind of hidden. And I can't pull the boot up and hold the camera at the same time. But it was down here next to these other two plugs kind of down in this little void right here between the frame and these two plugs so that's where you'll find this 8 pin connector for home link sometimes you just need a little help I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to mash that tab there now the plug came out our next challenge is we need to route this cable 
um, underneath this frame piece right here, this little frame rail, so that we can connect to this. We don't want this hanging over any part of the frame because when we put the seat back on, it'll crush it. We got our wire under the frame rail where we need it to be. Now we gotta do, hook it up. Maybe I need to turn it upside down. There we go. We are connected. Now I'm gonna get this rubber boot back over this, tuck it back down there where it belongs, and we're done with the connection part. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove and replace all of these parts, check out my maintenance video series. There is no doubt that installing Homelink is harder than it should have to be. Honda should make it easier, but it is doable, and you'll save a lot of money by doing the job yourself. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my YouTube channel.